Live from Case at 12, the news at 530 starts right now. An afternoon ride in the Texas Hill Country turned fatal for a law enforcement motorcycle club yesterday. Yeah, these three men were killed and nine others were injured when a car slammed into them while they were riding. The Kerr County Sheriff's Office says 28 year old Ivan Robles caused the head on crash off Highway 16 south of Kerrville. Stephen Cavazos is live by the Kerr County Jail where Robles remains in custody this evening. Stephen, what more can you tell us about this crash? Well, Tim Cordy, we know that members of the Blue Line Law Enforcement Motorcycle Club had traveled here to Bandera for their annual foundation meeting. Now, several of, the, several of those members were traveling back from Kerrville when a car traveling from Medina crashed head on into that group of motorcyclists. Now, Joseph Poliglia, Jerry Wayne Harbor and Michael White were killed in that crash. Nine others were taken to area hospitals with injuries. The crash comes as the members were planning to celebrate the club's 50th anniversary this weekend. Now, the majority of the group consists of police officers from different parts of the country. David Wheat, a spokesperson for the Blue Line Law Enforcement Motorcycle Club, says it's a tragic end for these men and their families. Their goal in, in life was to take these, these kind of people off the streets to make their city and their communities better places. And it was a guy like that yesterday who took their lives. Now, Harbor was a retired loot, pardon me, Harbor was a retired lieutenant colonel with the U.S. Army and Poliglia, a retired officer with the Niles Police Department. He also served as the Chicago chapter's president and White served as the secretary of that same chapter. Now, Ivan Robles, who is still here at the Kerr County Sheriff's Office, does face multiple charges of intoxication manslaughter or intoxication assault and three counts of intoxication manslaughter with a vehicle. We'll have more on this story tonight on the Night Beat. But for now, reporting live, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Courtney? Thank you, Stephen. Well, a suicide at the Bear County Jail is now being investigated. BCSO officials say the 37 year old inmate died despite deputies efforts to save her. The incident happened this morning just before 10 o'clock. The deputy that found the inmate began life saving measures, but that inmate was pronounced dead 30 minutes later. The identity of the inmate has not been released, but we do know she was booked on July 16th on possession and theft charges. Three people are in serious condition after being shot several times on the southwest side. It all happened just after 5 a.m. in the 6700 block of Medina Base Road. Sarah Costa now tells us how the scene unfolded. A crashed SUV in the front of the southwest side Valero gas station. It's the scene that was left behind after the SUV was shot at several times. Those gunshots seriously injuring the driver and the passengers inside. The San Antonio Police Department says they were called out to the 6700 block of Medina Base Road on the southwest side just after 5 this morning. When they arrived, they found three people with serious gunshot wounds in this GMC Yukon. Police say the victims were driving southbound on 410 when another Another SUV pulled up next to them and fired several shots at them. The gunfire causing the victims to crash their vehicle at this gas station. Police say they were able to talk to the victims to gather the little information that they know. The driver, a woman, was shot in the head. However, police say she was able to talk to them before she was taken to the hospital. The man sitting in the front seat was hit in his abdomen, arm, and hand. And the man sitting in the back, police say, had a gunshot wound to his leg. All three of them were taken to University Hospital in serious condition. Crime scene investigators are investigating this shooting. At this time, police don't know if they're searching for a suspect or suspects. However, they believe they have the description of the vehicle that got away, a silver SUV. From the newsroom, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. And here are the latest COVID-19 numbers in Bear County. The total confirmed cases is 28,633. That's more than 1,100 new cases. 11 new deaths to report bring the toll to 251. 1,144 people are hospitalized with 426 in the ICU and 293 on ventilators. 48% of ventilators are available and 11% of staffed hospital beds are available. More than 10,000 people have recovered. This morning on GMSA, we spoke with Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf as part of our leading essay series. Judge Wolf says the spikes after Memorial Day and the 4th of July, one of many reasons in person classes were put on hold. He says many school districts supported that decision. I had two complaints, though, from outlying school districts, uh, Atascosa and, and Bernie, 
that do have a couple of schools in Bear County uh, saying they didn't like it, uh, but I'm afraid they're going to have to live by it. Uh, they're in Bear County, and that order will be enforced and will stay in place as September the 7th. I hope by then we have really turned things around. You can watch our full interview with Judge Nelson Wolf along with our other leading essay interviews right now on our website at ksat.com. Around 740 Department of Defense medical and support professionals will continue their COVID-19 operations here in Texas, as well as in California. In Texas, around 580 Army and Navy members will assist FEMA and state officials. Here in San Antonio, an 85-member medical task force from Fort Carson, Colorado, began treating patients at five local hospitals beginning July 9th. The team includes respiratory specialists in critical care, emergency room, and surgical nurses. Those personnel working at Christa Santa Rosa Medical Center, Baptist Health Center, Metro Metropolitan Methodist Metropolitan, and University Hospital. The request for support comes as capacity in Texas hospitals continues to decrease. Meanwhile, Governor Greg Abbott announcing today the deployment of five U.S. Navy teams to South Texas to help in the state's COVID-19 response. One U.S. Navy acute care team will provide support at the Valley Baptist Medical Center in Harlingen. And four U.S. Navy rural rapid response teams will support hospitals in Del Rio, Eagle Pass, and Rio Grande City. This is South Texas continues to have a surge in cases. San Antonio police are looking for two people accused of climbing through an Arby's drive through window and robbing the business at gunpoint. It happened around 1.30 this morning on Southeast Military Drive. Police say an employee tried to shut the window, but the driver made his way inside and grabbed money from the register. The suspects drove off in a Ford Mustang and left with an undisclosed amount of money. No one was hurt. Still ahead on the news at 5.30, intense protests over the weekend while federal law enforcement now receiving some backlash from how they've been handling protests in Portland. The backlash continues after the Trump administration sent federal authorities to Portland, Oregon to handle growing protests there. State and local officials say the presence of these federal agencies is only making the situation worse. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimbert with the details. After more than seven weeks of generally peaceful but contentious protests in Portland, Oregon, federal officials have moved in. Units from the Department of Homeland Security and other federal agencies now facing backlash over their militarized approach. It's like pouring gasoline on a fire. An internal DHS memo obtained by the New York Times says many on the ground are not even properly trained. The Times reporting one tactical team dispatched to Portland is normally tasked with investigating drug smuggling, not local protests. However, a Department of Homeland Security spokesperson telling ABC News that report in the Times is incorrect and officers did receive additional training for their deployment to Portland. President Trump defending his administration's actions this morning, telling Fox News. If we didn't take that stand right now you would have a problem like you know you, they were going to lose portland portland's mayor says the federal presence is escalating the situation their presence here is actually leading to more violence and more vandalism and it's not helping the situation at all. They're not wanted here. We haven't asked them here. In fact, we want them to leave. Oregon Senator Jeff Merkley says when he gets back to Washington, D.C. next week, he's going to introduce an amendment to the defense bill in an effort to limit the Trump administration's power to send federal agents to places like Portland. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. Outside with live cam, 97 degrees at the airport, and it's been a rain-free day so far, but there actually are a couple of teeny showers trying to sneak into far eastern Bear County. We'll take a look at radar coming up in just a few minutes, but first, let's check on the aquifer. It is up four tenths of a foot since yesterday to 655.2, and in the pollen count, mold low again today with a count of 320. Pigweed is also low on this Sunday. I'll be right back with a look at a forecast that I actually think you'll like. We'll be right back. A little warmer out there today, about the same time as yesterday, and less activity on the radar, too. Yeah, but Katie just promised we were going to like the forecast. Oh, well, good. I'm <laughs> all about that. Wait till you see this planning forecast, <laughs> uh, especially as we get toward the end of this week and the start of next weekend. Finally, a little change of pace here, looking at some better rain chances as we get toward the end of the week. For now, it is so hot, 97, feeling like 97, though, so the heat index here in town, not too far removed from the actual air temperature, but yeah, bottom line, it's so 
still hot out there feeling like July. As we get into the week ahead, we'll see our air temperatures for the next several days, really for the majority of the upcoming work week stay in the mid to upper 90s. But look ahead to Friday. 92, not necessarily chilly there, but that's going to be a day to watch this week. And as we get into Saturday next weekend for better rain chances that we really need and rain chances and cloud cover that could bring our temperatures down a few degrees. So looking at this evening, we've got a few stray showers out there. They will be wrapping up closer to sunset. Otherwise, just warm with a bit of a breeze as we wrap up the weekend. Most of the rainfall activity today has been down closer to the coast, but it looks like what's happened here is that these decaying showers and storms have put out little outflow boundaries that have wandered off to the north and to the west, and that's resulting in a little redevelopment closer to us here in San Antonio and Bear County. So we've got a few of these little guys trying to pop up in western Wilson County, far eastern Bear County here. They're going to be very short lived, but if you're in eastern Bear County, you could get a little shower here maybe within the next hour or so. If these guys put out little outflow boundaries, maybe we can continue to see some development off to the west, but bottom line, rainfall is going to be hard to come by this evening and if your yard does get a little bit of rain consider yourself very lucky here again these little thunder showers moving off to the west again all this activity will really wrap up once we get past sunset and lose the heat of the day and honestly over the next several days essentially through thursday the best chance for rain is going to be east of san antonio and east of i-35 that's where some of our coastal bend counties could see maybe close to an inch of rain through Thursday this week. Now, each day it's not out of the question, kind of like what we're seeing today, that a stray shower or storm could make it to San Antonio or I-35. But bottom line, we've got a better chance of rain over the next few days if you are east of San Antonio in the I-35 corridor. But things will start to change late this week and into the start of next weekend. A big reason for that, what's going on in the steering levels of the atmosphere. So we've got the heat high as we get toward the end of this week, centered off to our north and to our east. The winds around that heat high are moving clockwise. What this is going to do is usher in a little rain making disturbance that will move into the Gulf of Mexico later this week. The heat high is actually going to help to steer this little rainmaker over South Texas as we get into Friday and Saturday of next weekend. And this is looking good, like a scattering of some showers and storms. Now, the tricky thing here is that that little rainmaking disturbance is actually a tropical disturbance that the National Hurricane Center is keeping its eye on. For now, it's off closer to the Bahamas, but over the next few days, we'll keep an eye on this disturbance. It is expected to move into the Gulf of Mexico late this week, really into Thursday. Odds of it becoming a defined tropical cyclone are super low through five days, just 20%. Regardless, we're looking at this system moving in, giving us a scattering of showers and storms beginning Friday this week. So looking good as far as rainfall is concerned. Of course, we'll keep you updated in the days ahead. 75 year low temperature tonight, mostly clear, but we will pull in a few low clouds as we get closer to dawn tomorrow. High temperature tomorrow, 97 under partly cloudy skies. 10% chance that one of those stray showers gets to us tomorrow afternoon. And really for the next few days, again, better chance of rain down closer to the coast. But look at Friday and Saturday. 40% scattered showers and storms. We may tweak that a bit as we get a better grip on that disturbance. So be sure to keep checking the forecast this week. But a nice change of pace, I think. She was right. Yep, she knows she, what we like. She was right. We like it. Cooler temperatures and more chances for rain. Thank you. All right, Larry's off today. Jessica's in. And the NBA getting ready for that yeah, restart, starting to play yeah. each other. That's also a nice change of pace after yes. you know, having just the practices. Finally, some inter-squad games and scrimmages. NBA scrimmages beginning this week. Spurs players, staff ready to go. And NFL players supposed to report to camps this week. But players taking to Twitter to voice their concerns. That's next in sports. We'll finally be able to see NBA teams take the court against each other this week. But hey, look at Becky holding her own against DeMar before the NBA officially restarts the season on July 30th. Teams will participate in three scrimmages, which began as early as Wednesday for some teams. The Spurs arrived to the Orlando bubble on July 9th, have been preparing for the condensed season since. Lonnie Walker said he and his teammates are looking forward to seeing how the hard work they've been putting in at practice measures up. I think as a team, we're excited. Um, we've all been working real hard, staying real disciplined on what we do. Um, even on on-court, uh, uh, you know, five on fives that we do on the level of intensity, uh, it has felt different. I mean, you can ask anyone that's been playing um, for every single one of us, you know, the style of play, how we're playing, you know, we're all just excited to be together and um, play team basketball. So going into scrimmaging, 
I think we are, we're all, you know, truly ecstatic, you know, to finally get back to plan and see what we can do. For Spurs head coach Greg Popovich, the three scrimmages this week are just business as usual for his club. It's just another practice, so it'll just be another day uh, as we move forward for the regular eight game. So it's just another piece of the process. Here's a look at that schedule. They'll open inter-squad play against the Bucks at 2 p.m. on Thursday, the 23rd, then the Nets on Saturday at 3.30. And finally on the 28th, just three days before their first official game, San Antonio will play the Pacers at 3. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Training camps for the 32 NFL teams will commence as planned with rookies reporting Tuesday, quarterbacks and injured players by Thursday, all players reporting by July 28th, but an agreement regarding safety and coronavirus protocols has not been met. And in a social media blitz, the league's top stars voiced their concern Sunday using the hashtag we want to play. The Texans J.J. Watt listing a number of safety concerns and items yet to be addressed by the NFL, including how teams will go about testing and how positive tests would be treated. Reigning Super Bowl champion and 2018 league MVP Patrick Mahomes weighing in and Saints QB Drew Brees saying, quote, we need football, we need sports, we need hope. The NFL's unwillingness to follow the recommendations of their own medical experts will prevent that. If the NFL doesn't do their part to keep players healthy, there is no football in 2020. It's that simple. Get it done at NFL. The MLB is the first of the four major professional sports leagues to begin inter-squad competition with fans getting their first look at coronavirus era games, cardboard cutouts, crowd mimicking sound effects and socially distanced dugouts. Three games Saturday night, the Yankees getting the best of the Mets 9-3, the Nationals dropping one to the Phillies 7-2 in Cleveland over Pittsburgh 5-3. More exhibition games slated for this evening in the 60 game regular season beginning on Thursday, July 23rd. The Toronto Blue Jays will have to find a new home field after the country's Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship announced Canada will not allow games to be played at the Rogers Centre or in Canada period due to the back and forth travel across the border. The Jays home opener is scheduled for July 29th against the Nats. The team's AAA affiliate is located in Buffalo, New York, and its spring training base is in Dunedin, Florida. Both possible options for the team this season. The Flying Chanclas were in action last night against the Victoria General and look to right the ship after dropping two straight to the Generals. This was a wild one. Game was tied at two after one, but then the Chanclas gave up four in the top of the third, but they cut the lead to 5-2 and then get three more back in the bottom of the ninth to tie it up. This one goes to extras, and the Chanclas walk it off with a Grant Smith driving in with the single. The winning run was, and the final score was 7-6. Three RBI for Grant last night. Final game of the homestand this evening. First pitch at 7.05 from Wolf Stadium. San Antonio FC will resume USL action Sunday evening for the first time since the league suspended play in March. The club takes on RGV FC in a game that had originally been scheduled for Friday but was postponed after a member of the RGV organization tested positive for the coronavirus. That one's scheduled for an 8 p.m. start. NASCAR back in action this evening from right here in the Lone Star State, the Texas Motor Speedway hosting Sunday's O'Reilly Auto Parts 500. You can see some of the fans tailgating beforehand. Eric Almarola on the pole for this one. We are just about 290 laps completed. Tyler Reddick is currently leading highlights tonight on instant replay. Final round of Memorial Tournament just outside of Ohio this weekend. Here's how day four is shaping up. John Ram atop the leaderboard by about four strokes. He's through 14. Tiger, not the best day for him. Tied at 40th, six over. Playing very well today. No. Yeah, they're in my home state in uh, Dublin, Ohio, right outside of Columbus. Yeah. Been there a few times. I forgot that was That's the city one. you were yeah. from. Well, oh, I'm not from there, but I've been there. <laughs> We'll be back. I was wrong. <laughs> okay, so I can't lose today because yep. it's just Tim, but those are so Larry cute. Slacken, Yogi Bear. I'm smarter than the average bear. <laughs> I hey, love Boo -Boo. Yogi Bear. <laughs> you would have won anyway. Yeah. You can't beat that. Next weekend, maybe Larry will be here. We can see his socks. <laughs> see you at 10.